Are you vegan or not? Are you eating nutritional yeast or not? So I just came upon the study that is getting a little bit of attention, vitamin and mineral status in a vegan diet. In Germany, public interest in a vegan diet is steadily growing. There are, however, no current data on the macro and micronutrient status of vegans. So they wanted to do just that, to collect that data by comparing vegan dietary intake as well as numerous biomarkers to omnivores. The study design is actually pretty cool. While it is small, 36 vegans and 36 omnivores living in Berlin, they seem to have done a really good job of keeping both groups very similar, kind of as similar as possible. Again, split evenly, male and female, similar age, education, physical activity, BMI. Also, they didn't rely on food surveys, no food questionnaires. Instead, they did a three-day weighed food record. Finally, they used several markers to determine B12 status, including methylmalonic acid. Speaking of B12, no differences between vegans and omnivores were found with respect to median vitamin B12. In fact, only two of the vegans showed mild deficiency based on the B12 indicator. Why? Why these awesome results? Very likely supplementation. <laughs> this is not surprising. 92% of the vegans in this study were supplementing for B12. Similar results have been found elsewhere. Not quite that impressive, but recent studies have found that most vegans in the studies are supplementing. So that's very good because decades ago, most vegans were not supplementing. So it seems like education around B12 is working, that most vegans see it as something that we should supplement for and are supplementing for it. So that's, yay, good job. In other good and not really surprising news, vegans got plenty of fiber, vitamin E, vitamin K, folate, uh, significantly more of these than the omnivore group. A lot more iron as well, even though ferritin status between both groups was similar. To be expected since iron, non-heme iron is less bioavailable than heme iron. Even though the consensus among vegan RDs has been that we don't really need to worry about getting more iron, some recent studies argued that maybe vegans should consider getting more than the RDA. And if you look at the intake, the median intake, it is higher than the RDA. Zinc, while lower than omnivores, was still within range. Vitamin D looked pretty good. No one below range, depending on what is below range. There are people who think that it should be raised to 30. For both vegans and omnivores, higher levels were found for those who supplemented. Shocking. And lipid panel was significantly better for vegans. Duh. Even HDL though, even HDL was sufficient for vegans. So that's pretty cool. Cause that's been one of those things like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe your LDL is better, but what about your HDL? Not surprising if you look at fat intake though. The, these were not, these were not low fat vegans. <laughs> Thank God. And now for the bad news. So calcium intake was significantly lower and that might have shown up in the blood work by way of parathyroid hormone levels. It was elevated in 10 vegans and three omnivores. The median concentration for B1 and B2 were within range for vegans, but some individuals were below. In fact, 36% of vegans had low B2 versus 14% of omnivores. Nutritional yeast, what are y'all doing? Are you vegan or not? Are you eating nutritional yeast or not? Is that is that the standard we need to go by now? If you're not eating nutritional yeast every day? A lot of the vegans were low in selenium. Again, not very surprising since a lot of the good sources of selenium are animal products. Though I should mention that Europe tends to have lower levels of selenium in the soil. So this might not apply to American vegans. But the big one, the most concerning thing to me about the study, and not surprising to me in the least, iodine. 25% of omnivores, 8% of vegans had adequate excretion. So 75% of omnivores and 92% of vegans in this study do not seem to be getting enough iodine. And going by the threshold set by the World Health Organization, about 30% of vegans were severely deficient. Again, not surprising to me at all. Plants generally are not a great source. And in this study, only five of the vegans were supplementing for iodine. Germany does have iodized salt, just like we do, but many people are choosing sea salt, at least here. I wouldn't be surprised if it's the same over there, particularly for vegans who, you know, we tend to be a little more crunchy granola and might even be like afraid of, what is it? The anti-caking agents or whatever and the iodized salt are bad and, you know, 
sea, sea salt's the natural, healthier salt because it has trace minerals or whatever. Point is, most of the sea salt, not iodized, so it's not a source of iodine, and most of us aren't eating seaweed. So what is the solution to all of this, assuming that this is representative to vegans on the whole? Obviously, it's only one study, but at least when it comes to iodine, it makes sense that we would see lower levels in vegans and really in the population on the whole, because again, a lot more people are choosing iodine-free salts and also people are drinking less milk and milk tends to be one of the main sources of iodine for people, at least in America. But assuming this is representative of the vegan community on the whole, what do we do? Well, number one, we can eat foods that are high in these nutrients. Calcium, certain dark leafy greens are really great sources. They have great bioavailability. So absorption of calcium from these foods is excellent. Jenny Messina's calcium primer, the Vegan RD, her calcium primer is awesome. Highly recommend this to all vegans. Again, certain leafy greens like kale, mustard greens, turnip greens, broccoli, not spinach, it's too high in oxalates. Beans and nuts and seeds provide moderate amounts of calcium. Soaking nuts and seeds can improve absorption of that calcium. Calcium set tofu. So lots of plants have calcium, but if you're just randomly eating plants, there's a good chance that you're not getting enough if you aren't making sure that you're eating at least three cups per day of foods that are rich in well-absorbed calcium. B1 and B2, lots of plants are great sources of these. And seriously, nutritional yeast. Obviously you're vegan, <laughs> you don't eat nutritional yeast, but it is a really, really great source of B vitamins. This is just one teaspoon, one teaspoon. Selenium, Brazil nuts, Brazil nuts are insane. This is just one, one nut. Whole grains like whole wheat pasta are also great. Iodine, seaweed, you have to be careful because some seaweed is really, really high in iodine, so you can get too much. And then the other option is supplements. Take a multi, and drink some calcium fortified non-dairy milk. I love this table from the study because it shows blood concentration based on supplementation. B1, much higher in vegans who supplemented for it. B2, much higher in vegans who supplemented for it. B3, B6, vitamin E, zinc, selenium, iodine, ferritin, all higher in those who supplemented for them. The one exception is calcium excretion, which seems weird, but I think it could be that the vegans who are supplementing for it are taking a multi that has it. And if you're taking a multi with calcium, it's not going to have very much because otherwise the thing's going to be that big, right? Typically multis have like a hundred milligrams or so of calcium in them, 50 to a hundred. So I wouldn't be surprised if, again, those people are, they are supplementing for calcium, but like not really, not very much to, to make a difference, right? I would have loved if they had broken down by like who consumed calcium fortified non-dairy milk and who didn't. That would have been awesome. Again, this is a small study, it's only 36 vegans, but I do believe that it's hard to meet nutrient needs from whole foods, vegan or not. And this study, along with other studies, seems to support that. I really think that taking a sensible multi, not one of the super high dose stupid ones, please don't take those, but just a simple normal multi, like the Deva multi, I think it makes sense for a lot of us. You're probably not gonna eat like Mike the Vegan, or Dr. Greger, you know, optimizing everything that you that you eat to make sure you're meeting all your needs from whole foods. Maybe you will for a while, but uh, you know, for most of us, that shit's gonna get old. You're gonna forget. You're gonna stop eating kale and broccoli for weeks at a time. You're gonna stop eating your special vitamin D mushrooms. Again, this is only one study, but at least when it comes to iodine, this is just like B12, this is what we would expect to see for people who aren't either eating seaweed or taking a supplement that contains iodine. And this recent review did come to the same conclusion. Vegans and vegetarians living in industrialized countries not consuming seaweed or iodine-containing supplements appear to have increased risk of low iodine status, iodine deficiency, and inadequate iodine intake compared to adults following less restrictive diets. Just like B12, this is easy to fix. Take a supplement, eat some seaweed. And as I've talked about before, if you are raising your child vegan, please make sure that they have a source of iodine. Unlike cow's milk, non-dairy milks are not a source of iodine. And if you want to write to Silk and all the other non-dairy plant milk brands and kindly ask them if they would consider adding iodine to their products, that'd be pretty sweet. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I wasn't too condescending. 
I care about you. You know, I want vegans to be healthy. And I, I think in a lot of cases, just taking a stupid multi even every other day would make a difference for people. It's, it's hard, you know, we're not perfect. And it's hard to remember to eat certain foods every day or almost every day. Speaking as someone who's been doing this a long time, there's a reason why, yes, I eat whole foods, but I also rely on supplements to meet my needs. It's a lot easier. And it means I get to eat popcorn like every day. So I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe, support the channel, patreon.com slash unnatural vegan, onlyfans.com slash unnatural vegan. Someone said it makes them laugh every time I say it. Yeah, it makes me laugh too. It's not sexy time stuff. <laughs> it's just me talking about labyrinth and this amazing, this amazing thing I found. And it's just the best thing. And it's only $1,600. I can afford it. I also have a little Amazon store page. It's a little affiliate page with links to stuff that I like. I get a little bit of money if you buy through my links. I got some shirts too. Anyway, thank you again for watching. And I will have a new video soon. This is it for the Halloween. I promise I'm taking it down after this. Quick side note about B12. Four of the vegans in the study actually had elevated levels um, based on the, the B12 indicator, which includes all four. Um, the researchers expressed some concern about this against the backdrop of recent studies about the association between the intake of B12 supplements and an increased lung cancer risk. The intake of vitamin B12 supplements, which was previously regarded as safe, may need to be reevaluated. Veganhealth.org has an update here explaining why we probably shouldn't be concerned, at least for now, and why they haven't um, changed their guidelines, their B12 guidelines. In fact, they just increased them. Um, they now have an upper suggestion based on the European Food Safety Authority's adequate intake, which is higher than the than the US RDA. Just wanted to um, just include that in there. If you are worried about it, just stick to the to the lower end of that. But whatever you do, please do not like stop supplementing altogether. <laughs> That's, you know, d don't do that. But yeah, this is what science is for. So I hope we do see some more research in this area. Hopefully it will turn out that there's um, some confounding factors, which again, uh, Jack Norris talks about in the little update and recommendations will stay the same, but maybe not. Maybe we will have to consider um, staying on the lower end of recommendations. We shall see. I want to call this vegans. We need to talk about iodine or vegans. We need to talk about deficiencies or so something like that. I'm like trying to think of, of a good title. I just see, I hate that. Vegans. <laughs> Although didn't I do that for the protein one? It's like vegan YouTubers. We need to talk about protein or something. Isn't that what it's called? Like I want to just be like, I want to talk about this study on vegans and iodine intake, but that's not, that's not very engaging. I mean, I wouldn't click on that video. I'd probably click on that video because this is an issue that's really important to me, but if there's anything else that's titled in a similar, like, this is where I talk about this thing, I'm not clicking on that video. It's got to be like, ladies, listen up. Four reasons why your twat smells funny, or I don't know. <laughs> Why was that what I came up with? Jeez. Is it because I'm on my period and my, <laughs> and my twat smells funny right now? Funny is a very nice way of putting it. Goodbye, men. <laughs> this channel is not for you. No, I'm kidding. Everyone's welcome here, but just know that sometimes I'm going to talk about, I'm not saying it. I'm not going to say it.